Welcome back to Learn C++ Game Development Course Lesson 3. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to use a simple state-based system to further separate our events part of the game loop from the logic part. Now, in the code of the previous video, we have four events, two of them for closing the program, and two of them for outputting to the console. Now, by separating the logic and events part, we have to move the printout to the console and the setting of play to false to close our game loop into the logic part. Now, this may seem silly at first, but there are two reasons why we want to do this. The first one is when we have large projects with huge amounts of code, we don't want to do a hundred or a thousand lines of code in here if a key has been pressed. And the second one is, and the more important one, is that the events part of the game loop doesn't always happen. It only, only happens when there is an event in the queue. If there wouldn't be any event in the queue, nothing of this would happen. And if we would have like a thousand lines of code in here, they wouldn't happen. And we don't want that to happen. We want it to happen every frame, and that's why we put it into the logic part of the game loop. And by doing that, we use a very simple state-based system. And that is that we create one or two variables, boolean variables, for every button we use in the events part of the loop. So we're going to create a one variable for the escape bot button and two variables for the A button. And we do that before the main game loop. So here will be button variables. And let's create the escape variable first. So the type is bool. And let's name it button escape. And at the start we set it to false. Then we have two variables for the A button, and that is bool button A, let's call it down, set to false, and bool button A up, also set it to false at the start. Now we have all the variables we need to handle the logic. Now we're going to remove the logic from the events part and put it into the logic part. So in here, in the escape pressed down part of the event, we want to set the button escape to true. And we're also going to change the event type from key up to key down. Now every time we press the escape button, button escape is going to be set to true. And now down here in the logic part, we simply check if button escape is equal to true. And then we do the same logic we have done before up here. So we set play to false. And the program will close. We'll also use the same variable, that is the button escape, for pressing the X button in the window because they basically do the same logic. So in here we're going to raise everything and just add button escape is equal to true. And we very simply separated the logic from those two events. So if we run this and press escape, the program closes. And if we press the X, the program closes again. Now let's separate the button. Remove the code and set button A down to true. So the event for key down and set 
button A down to true. And for released button A event, we set button A up to true. Now we have to write the same logic in the logic part. So if if button A down is equal to true, we print to the console. So we do a print of button A pressed. And we do another if, if button A has been released. So if button A up is equal to true, we do another printout. So I just copy this and paste it down here. So button A released. Now if we run this, it's going to print out button A pressed all the time and when we release it it's going to say button A is released and pressed and that's because button A is true all the time after the events has happened once so when we press button A for the first time down button A down is going to be set to true and from now on button A down, this statement is always going to be true and will always execute. We simply can solve this by setting button A down to false in here and button A up to false. So the event happens, button A up is set to true, it comes to the logic part, button A up is equal to true, it prints to the console and sets button A up to false. So now this statement is not true again until this event happens again and button A up is set to true again. So if we execute this again, we see that the output works normally now. So this is how we separate the logic from the events by using a very simple bool state system. Thanks for listening.